You don't see many of these. This is Lycoming's IO-720. With eight cylinders, it's the largest conventional aircraft engine the company makes. At the opposite end of the spectrum is Lycoming's smallest, the EL-005. It won't quite fit into the cylinder of an IO-720, but it's close. Let's take a look at what this engine is all about. Uh, this engine right here is the, the EL-005, that's Echo Lima 005. The 5 stands for 5 cubic inches. Uh, the EL stands for electronically controlled, L stands for inline, but as a single cylinder engine obviously you have that. But uh, the EL-005 is the smallest engine that we've uh, produced here at Lycoming. It is a two-stroke um, fuel injected, direct injected engine that runs on Jet A. Uh, it's a direct drive machine with an integrated alternator on top of it and designed into a nice line re replaceable unit package uh, for a vehicle called the Arisand MK 4.7 Golf model. That's an aircraft produced by Textron Systems unmanned systems unit and uh, Lycoming has been providing the engine for that aircraft now for a little more than a year. So the reason why this engine runs on Jet A, and actually is, it actually is a multi-fuel engine, so you could run it on gasoline or jet fuel. But the main reason these engines run on Jet A in the environment they do is just logistics. Um, you know, there's the military, uh, who is the primary end user of the services on this, is basically using these for camera hours. Um, but the logistics piece on that side is the, is the predominant is every fluid you have to transport, whether it's coolant, fuel, oil, whatever, is uh, if you think you pay a lot of the pump in general aviation, take that, multiply it 80 times to get it in theater of operation. So it runs Jet A mainly because of logistics, uh, is that that's what they have. Uh, that's a common fuel that they're using for their ground vehicles, their generators, and everything else. So if you want to run a different fuel, you have to add all the logistics in terms of getting a different fuel to it. So. Quite simply, it's not because of safety or fuel efficiency, it's just a logistic solution. Jet fuel is jet fuel designed for turbines, so getting it to light off at once, you know, once every second or, or quicker on that is a pretty challenging task. So, uh, you know, the key to that is uh, understanding what the fuel is like and how you get it to behave. Uh, jet fuel has virtually no octane. It's, uh, it's probably worse fuel than what uh, Wilbur and Orville had to work with. You're talking about octane ranges in the below 30 range. So it's a fairly low compression ratio. You're talking below eight, um, you know, in the, in be, between six and eight on that stuff. Uh, and then you have to direct inject the fuel and you have to treat the fuel prior to direct injection so you actually can get it to light off. Uh, so it comes into how you inject the fuel, um, the cleanliness of the fuel, the temperature of the fuel, the amount of uh, energy that you're putting into the spark to be able to get a successful light off on it. Uh, the other challenge on this is you're also dealing with some pretty you know, it's aviation, so you're dealing everything from sea level induction air type conditions to stuff that you find above 15,000 feet on it. Uh, so it's a very wide range of operation, and it's difficult. So you, you throw uh, electronic fuel injection into it, you throw some sophisticated calibration, and uh, then you treat the fuel you best you can for what you have. So the, the engine is, is designed to be maintained as an LRU. So LRU means line replaceable unit. Uh, you're obviously dealing with aircraft that are used a lot um, by folks that are more operators than they are aviation personnel. Uh, a lot of talent there, but the, the main item is that your main thing here is keeping the aircraft in the air. So in terms of, of maintaining the unit, they take them out of a box, they put them on the aircraft. When they're at TBO, they take them out and put them down. This engine here, because it's a two-stroke engine, uh, the TBO on this engine is 400 hours. Uh, and in certain conditions we'll extend it beyond that. But, you know, two strokes, uh, you don't get the life out of a two stroke that you get out of a four stroke. Uh, so it's a, it's a very reliable 400 hours uh, on a very small aircraft.